good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Gaurav Singh. Uh, I'm a product manager in, uh, in OpenShift, and um, I have a son and son from IBM. So you want to introduce yourself? I think your mic is working. Okay, it's working. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm Sanyan Shishaka from IBM Research from Tokyo. Uh, so um, I gave a session in this morning. Uh, what I really want to bring in front of the community is stuff that I'm listening from my customers so that you get the perspective of the use cases that we are dealing with, right? We, we have this session with Darren. We talk about uh, uh, scaling on the cloud busting. The, you, 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 you saw a gentleman from NLL Lab who's working with IBM and Red Hat to, 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 do, uh, to this uh, um, flex uh, scheduler. So these are all based on the use case that we are seeing in the field and we are helping them, right? Um, so um, like clouds and HPC AI, what again, right, what we are seeing is customer looking forward to have like cloud saving and elasticity type of uh, uh, use case where, you know, e any like EC2, GPU based EC2 instances are expensive. You don't want to grab that and hold it for uh, you know for, for the job, uh, and if it's finished, you you don't want it to be associated with that job. You want to get it free so that either it goes back to the pool, or you can um, uh, you don't get billed for the usage, or it being used for other job, right? And similarly, elasticity. You need to make sure that um, if there's more jobs in, in the queue, you are scaling the same cluster, adding node. Uh, because think about creating a cluster from the scratch and adding the whole operators on top of it take time, take five to 15 minutes, right? So you, cost saving, elasticity, reliability, right? It, reliability in terms of the job. Let's say you are running a training and, and then a cloud instance by inheritance is sometimes unreliable. So what, what if you are in a day of your training and your cloud instance got uh, deprovision or, or disconnected. So you need to figure out that, uh, you know, uh, reliability of that running of a job, maybe taking a snapshot or putting that, uh, uh, put, uh, dividing a job into sub jobs and running across the zones. Flexibility, uh, I did talk about this in the morning where, you know, you want to, uh, or my customers, uh, they are looking to take benefit of the cloud in, in a holistic way of the hardware capabilities they are providing, either from GPUs or fast network and uh, fast storages. So challenges, right? Uh, challenges that we are uh, seeing or uh, AI, uh, HPC is, um, you know, f the communication from GPU to GPU needs to be fast. There needs to be a faster bandwidth pipe going from one GPU to other. Um, and uh, Sanasan will gonna talk the whole presentation on how how we can use multi uh, infinity band. Second is the uh, fast loading of images. Uh, these AIML images tends to be very heavy, right? Uh, think about you are downloading the image from an image registry. It's gigabyte of images you're downloading it. Uh, what what if you want to cache it? Do you want to cache it on the same node, or uh, you want to cache it on every node? Is your east to east west traffic is more faster than north south, right? R rather than going to the uh, uh, to registry all the time, you have a cache somewhere, right? So think about that. Uh, is is we we are, we are seeing um, a prevalent use case around that. Again, uh, queue. We we have talked about queue in a couple of ways. Uh, you know, we we talk about. Uh, as in project, there's MCAT that is uh, have, uh, IBM team is working on. But really, uh, the problem set we are trying to solve here is when your jobs comes in, they need a place where they can uh, stay until unless a resources is available for their job to run, which is also the concept of the gang scheduling where, where if you have a resources for 10, um, uh, five node, uh, five jobs out of 10, you, your job doesn't schedule until you have all the resources available. Um, uh, and, I mean, and, and going forward, we have only, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about only multi-infinite band, but I'll be happy to talk to you uh, uh, offline about all these three, three uh, other uh, buckets that we are working on, uh, but I'll, I'll hand it over to Sanasan. Thank you, Gaurav. Um, okay, from my part, uh, I would like to start from this slide. Um, 
as Gaurav has already mentioned, it's her, his first slide that cloud brings so many benefits to the HPC and AI workload, and that is especially with the containerization and orchestration systems. That is why we are working so hard to make the full cycles of the AI and also the HPC workload work on the open shift, especially on top of the uh, virtual instance running on the, um, our, our GPU servers on the cloud. Um, and in, in this talk, I would like to focus on the, uh, on the first challenge that Gaurav has already mentioned in the previous slide, that we are going to make the monthly infinite band available for the HPC workload on top of the open ships and on top of the clouds instead. And this is the situations that we have uh, initially on our virtual uh, servers, or we call it VSI, it stands for the virtual server instance on the cloud. Um, we usually have a, a single primary NICs to make a connections on, on the clouds on the common VPC or virtual private cloud. To make our, to make the network more like um, supportive for the HPC and, and AI workload, we have our, um, we get um, the machines with their support of the SRIOV that uh, we can bypass the Swiss layers of their hypervisors and then we can enables almost a full bandwidth on the virtual instance that we have. And our, in some of our machines, we have a two of them, and we got like about 200 uh, gigabit per second for the throughput and 20 microseconds for the latency. Also, we use our um, adopter technologies of the RDMA as well to like uh, reduce the latencies with the, um, with the RDMA. And also we have some instance that have a combinations of those our technology together. And finally we get like um, 400 gigabit per second for the throughput and 10 microseconds for the virtual server instance level. The problem next is that uh, how can we bring this Montenix network solutions from the cloud VSI into the pod level? And this, slide will show uh, two part. One is like what we have in the default network uh, or the Kubernetes system that we provided right now. Um, right now, as you may already know, we usually have one primary our interface on the pod that make the connection to the control plane and those stuff. And with that one, we usually have our two um, pass the packet through to some address translations or the encapsulations to make the pod IP our pod IP or the pod packet routable to another instance. And that further reduce the latencies and also further reduce the throughput and increase the latencies. So what, what we need for the AI and HPC is that, um, okay, we can leave the first primaries for the control planes, but what we need is we need to um, bring the secondaries in phase that uh, we attach to the high speed networks, connect directly to the pod. In, um, so that we can have the same throughput and same latencies that we have in the install level. And this is the key that we can achieve that part. So one thing is that we have to um, directly expose the package of the, of the pod straight forward to the, to the install and delay so that we don't have the overheads of encapsulations or the address translations. And another thing that we have to work on is that or after we um, make a straight, uh, straight route to the, to the host, we have to make sure that the pod uh, packet is routable on the underlay. And in Kubernetes, we have, our, um, we have the projects called Maltas that are already <laughs> mentioned in the previous talk that um, is this the projects that do very excellent job on like allow us to attach multiple uh, network interface into the pod. However, to make that happen, there is like uh, multiple steps that I still have to do manually and like people's um, files suffers from like uh, doing those stuff that is like this post step. The first step is that the administrator have to like uh, sneak into their are into the instant, they have to know about their interface, what interface is available, what is the interface name, what is the network address and those stuff. And then they have to co make a configurations to make the, um, their, the pod address routable. And then they have to define one by one for each interface uh, to make the attachment available and annotate that to the pod. 
in some are in some providers, uh, there is an infrastructure support that is will handles all of the pod IP address to make sure that even after you export the pod packet directly to the host, it can be routable to the other instance. However, the other step is still left to the administrator and the users to to handle all of the stuff. And in this uh, in this talk, I would like to present our uh, recent work on the Mandinix R CNI operators. These operators will like uh, handles the um, handles the configurations and the discovery the interface and handle everything. So what uh, leave for the administrator is to define just a single CNI definitions uh, in a very simple way and annotate that to the pod. So our, the benefits of the monthly NIFs is not just only their adoptabilities and usability that you can see from the previous slide that our admin and the user don't have to do much thing about the network and they can, they can enable our multiple infinite band into the pod. Uh, furthermore, in the Mandinix, we also consider uh, the dynamicity of the cluster, like uh, the cluster's um, machines can be scaled out and scale, scale out and scale in any times, depend on their uh, workload demand. And also, uh, is the interface itself can be added or removed, or it can be unavailable any times, and like uh, the noise can be unconnected, it can be reset any time. So this is uh, the thing that we have to handle with this dynamicity, and also, our uh, reconsiders about the scaling as well. Like we expect the the node can be scaled like uh, up to 100 or more than that, and we have to handle that uh, simultaneously with the uh, with the large numbers of the pod our pod IP allocation as well. So this is a key that how can we achieve the dynamicity and scale by the Mandinix. Um, First thing is that we do the isolations. We isolate the uh, uh, root configurations of the uh, for the each network so that we can handle the dynamicity separately from the, what the host is working on. And then uh, we do the synchronizations time to times to make sure that okay, our uh, the latest state of the host interface is up to date, and we can uh, handle um, the failures and do the recovery. The third thing is that we minimize the communications to the API servers that use um, some of you may are face the same problems when we like uh, depends on many things on the custom resource and we have to connect to API servers so many times and we can get like a rate limit problem and those issues. So we are, because most of the custom resource that we create is automatically created and controlled by the Mandinix CNIs. So we can catch that, we can do the minimizations on the API server communications. And the fourth our piece is the distributions. We do the IP management in the distributed way and independently from each uh, pod to make sure that it can scale. Uh, if you want to tie Mantinix CNIs now, it's already available on the operator hubs, not just only on the OpenShift operator hubs, but also like the communities communities as well. To get started with the Mantinix, there's just only a simple three steps. The first thing is, okay, install the operator. Second is define the uh, network, Mantinix network, just only a single one. And then no matter how many of the interface you have, it can be attached like a network, uh, like interface two. Um, and the third step is like uh, annotate that to the pod. This is where it's on top of the Malta. So the people who get used to Malta will also simply understand and like um, uh, apply this our Mantinix CNIs. Uh, from this, from this slide and the next slide, I will go into details about the Mountainix CNIs, like how it works, how it's composed of, but I will go very quickly because I don't think you are interested in, in, into the details. But of course, if you're interested, you can reach out to me and see more detail. Uh, basically, the CNI is composed of uh, three components. The controllers part uh, the main thing, and the daemons and the CNI, similar to the other CNI plugins. Um, for the custom resource that we manage, is that there is a full custom resource to manage. The main one is the Mantinic network that you still have to define. For the last three, is this managed, uh, is auto created and managed by the Mantinic controller, so you may not have to be uh, concerned about it. Basically, there is a three 
operating flow that may happen with the Mandinic CNIs, let's say it can be the even triggers to, to the CNI. The basic operate, operating flow is starting from like user deploy the operators and then uh, deploy the Mandinix uh, networks, create a pod, delete the pod. This is a simple trigger that happened to the Mandinix CNIs. Additional to that, uh, if users uh, scale the node, like increase the um, number of the node or change the interface on the node, that will trigger the, um, the synchronization change. And also like if the node is restart or it's failures, so it will trigger another synchronization. Um, starting from the basics of rating for like uh, when you deploy the operator, it will automatically create the demons, uh, deploy at the host with the CNIs, and also it will like automatically discover about the host interface, it know about the secondary interface, what is the device ID, is this, or uh, those stuff is listed in the host interface custom resource. And then when you deploy the Mandinic networks, it will automatically create the um, multi-task uh, definitions, network attachment definitions, considering the host interface definitions, and also the, it will uh, automatically compute the post ciders, compute the IP pools for the management, and then do the configurations to the root at the host to make sure that the pod IP uh, that is compute is uh, rootable. And then when you annotate uh, that CNI to the pod, it will automatically uh, delegate to the uh, Maltas, and Maltas will call the, this Mandinic CNI. And with this Mandinic CNI, it will automatically select the uh, interface that um, suitable for the situations. It can be the policies for selections, and it will automatically allocate the IP for, for the pod. If like, for example, if you, um, Defy for two, two additional interface will allocate for the two IP address. Also, like for after the delete the pod, it will again uh, delegate to the multis and come to the Mandinic CNIs to like update the IP pools and do those uh, synchronizations. Uh, if you change the node, it will like periodically synchronize and detect that, and after that, it will uh, update all of the custom resource, do the reconfigurations. Again, if the node is restored, this can be detected by the root. It's not available on the host anymore, so it can do the reconfig and make the root uh, become uh, available again. So this is now like um, open in the, uh, under the organizations of the foundation's model stack, so you can uh, share it out, and um, any contribution is very welcome. Um, what can we achieve with the Mandinic CNI is that um, we try to attach our one singles and the two of the uh, infinite bat, yeah, or with the SRIOV, and then we got like uh, half of the latency as expected at like uh, 3.5 or to the seven with the two nicks of the network bandwidth can be increased. Furthermore, it's not just only in terms of the uh, microservice of the latency throughput, we also pace with the um, real workload, with the time series models, with the high, uh, with the large amount of the uh, learning parameters, and we got like 89% uh, of the parallel efficiencies on the AI deep learning workload in our system. So in summary, like uh, we, have a Mandinic CNI that can make their communities uh, networking ready for their AI and HPC workload with not just only adoptability and usability, we also consider about the dynamicity and scale with four our key pieces, that is our isolation, synchronizations, minimization, and distribution. So that is all of my talk. Is that any questions? Please welcome. Thank you for joining this talk. Thank you. Questions? Uh, I kind of had two questions that I guess were related. Um, if you have a pod with multiple, I guess, IP addresses associated to it, how do you do service discovery for it? Like, say I you know, want to talk to that pod, I've got four different addresses to use to, I guess, take advantage of all that bandwidth, and so I do it, do I, how do I address them? And then, alternatively, is there a way I can present those four individual physical NICs as a bond to the pod so that I don't have to worry about that at all and it just appears to the pod as a single interface. Okay, um, I'm not sure I understand your uh, question clearly, but um, 
what the monthly see or discover is it something that are we visible in the host level. Like we have the daemons, monthly daemons that is can uh, do the same thing like I have configs with the netlinks library and then we can get the address and we can figure out this address is the primary or the secondary and we can get the in all information from most of, most of information from the netlink library. Sure, I guess and, uh, my question was more if you have pod A wants to talk to pod B, uh -huh. how does it know, like, you know, if you would normally do this by like pod dot namespace dot oh, okay. the domain, right? Like how does that work when you've got lots of mix in the pod? Uh, it's still based on the IP address and uh, in the monthly instance, we will do like a host interface locals IPAM. Uh -huh. So uh, we like our, with, with the ciders resource that we have, is we'll keep the information of the, okay, if your pod is in this host with this interface we'll in this range, and it's, we'll use that range for, um, put that in the root tables so that the uh, host can know that, okay, if the, um, this IP address is coming from this pod from this host in this interface. Sure, yeah, okay, I, oh, okay, I understood that. All right, I'll, I'll follow up with oh, you. sorry. Also. It's yeah. all right, yeah, yeah, doesn't matter. I guess the question is more about like DNS resolution. Like what does a DNS keep track of? Like the pod has multiple names, one name for each IP. Mm -hmm. Is that how it works? Yes. So I guess that answers the question. I'm sorry, could you repeat the questions again? Um, so you've got, the host is, you know, has its four additional or three or four additional mix, and you've kind of, uh, you know, you've exposed those directly into the pod's network namespace, and you've okay. set that all up, and the routing works, and I understand that. Okay. I guess my question is, can we make it so that those four individual physical interfaces are exposed into the pod network namespace as a bond, rather than individual interfaces, like using lag or something, so that you don't have to deal with it. Um, I, 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 will, I will come afterwards, I feel like. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> I can and, do this. and this is, there's a GitHub uh, page for this. You can always ask a question over there, and there are a lot of people who can help, uh, help you over there. But I, the question is, like, why would you want to represent it as one? Like, the idea is that you want to have different interfaces, and each one of them is serving a different purpose. Let's have a follow-up discussion after this one. <laughs> Seems like an interesting topic. Any other questions? Hey, thank you for your talk. Uh, I'm triggered by the minimize API server communication. Uh, I don't have a background in AIML. I'm just running an OpenShift platform for a large bank. But from a security perspective, we had a very similar discussion. Could we basically cut off all the traffic from the workload to the API server and only allow the hosts to connect the API server? Maybe you could work with the same pattern. So what you're saying is, uh, for security reason, you want all, all the uh, kubelets to connect to API server with the faster bandwidth. Basically, what Multus offers you is basically connect multiple networks and separate them out. Yeah. I guess the, what, what he's suggesting is that like any communication that happens between the orchestrator components happens on its separate network. Right? Uh -huh. And then for security reasons, and then the applications, they have their own network, then you can utilize multi-NIC to do that. But that's multi-NIC at the node level, not necessarily at the pod level, right? 
here exactly. That is the, the one of the purpose to have the Monday news as well, like to use for a different purpose. Maybe I'll, I'll connect with you. Uh, Mark Curry, okay. Okay, makes sense. Any other questions? Do you deal with setups where you have multiple necks at the node level and you want to assign one neck for each pod? So it's not multi neck at the, no at the pod level. For example, you have a neck for, like you have a NUMA architecture, a neck connected to a GPU, and you want to assign a pod to that GPU and get that neck and like does your like um, plugin handle this for us? Um, we are we are thinking about that, but it's not like at the point yet. So yeah, we are also thinking about the topology as well. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. There, there's one more slide where we show the whole team. Uh, oh uh, yeah. Yeah. So Sorry. I mean, there, there's a. I mean, group of people who are helping us throughout the effort, and uh, it's just two you see over here, but there's a full team behind us helping us. So. Maybe building on the question from Abdullah uh, for the multi -nic, do you, if you have a setup where you would have both InfiniBand and Ethernet, is this something that you would handle with the multi -nic controller or for a... Yeah, what, what the, um, no, there's it's something that's already available at their virtual servers. So right. what Montenegro operator do is like to bring the available interface to the pod. Right. So, okay. Yeah. So we are we are not like um, controls at the lower levels of their. Okay. So both would be exposed. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. Very interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you.